What up guys, it's your boy KFlow. Today I'm going to show you how to remove and install a brand new clutch, rear main seal and flywheel on your Toyota Tacoma. Let's get this thing started. This video was brought to you by KFlow Script, your number one resource for Tacoma DIY projects. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and that bell so you're notified with my latest videos. All the tools and items used in this video will be linked in the description below. Before you can do this work, make sure that the transmission is removed and the details on that work will be in another video and that will also be linked in the description below. Now let's get to the clutch removal. Now that the transmission is removed, spray everything down with soapy water. This will keep the dust down because you don't want to inhale any of that nasty stuff. Use a breaker bar and a 12mm socket to loosen the pressure plate hardware. If the whole assembly starts spinning, use a pry bar and pin that against the pressure plate and the frame to prevent it from spinning. Or you can use an impact driver. Once all the bolts are removed, we can take a pry bar and work that between the pressure plate and the flywheel so that we can remove that pressure plate completely. Be careful and make sure that the pressure plate is supported so that this thing doesn't drop on you as that whole thing comes off. Now let's spray down the flywheel with some more soapy water. Thread in a 12mm bolt and pin a wrench against the frame to prevent the flywheel from turning. Use a 14mm socket and the breaker bar to loosen all of the flywheel hardware. We can remove the rest of the hardware with an impact driver. Make sure to remove the pinned wrench and that the flywheel is pushed against the motor before removing the last bolt. You don't want this thing falling on yourself. Ah, nickels! Carefully support it with both hands before pulling it out. This thing is heavy. So be careful. With the clutch assembly fully removed, we make sure we remove the three alignment pins. Those pins might be stuck on the flywheel or the pressure plate. They are press fit, so we'll need to take a pin punch to push all three of them out. We can go back to the engine and soak the nuts and bolts on that rear main seal cover with PB Blaster. We can undo the 10mm bolts at the bottom with a ratcheting wrench and undo the rest of the nuts and bolts with a 10mm socket. We can now use a pry bar to pry off that rear seal cover. At this point, we clean up most of the chunks of the old gasket material at the motor. Make sure you keep the hardware organized so that you can put them back properly. Just a quick side note here guys, there are two shorter bolts in that group of hardware and that is for the bottom side of that seal cover. And here's a quick shot of the rear main seal and the cover. Let's punch out the old rear main seal by floating the cover on 2x4s and then using a pin punch to push that seal out completely. To prepare everything. Let's clean it up with brake cleaner and a Scotch-Brite. Let's make sure we clean it up as thoroughly as possible. Now let's go back to the motor and clean up all those mating surfaces with brake cleaner and the Scotch-Brite as well. Here's the new rear main seal. Keep in mind, and this is important, there are two sides to this. Make sure that the side with the flat is at the outside as you see here. Let's press that in as hard as possible onto the cover by hand. And according to the manufacturer, this seal has to be installed dry. I used a 2x4 and a hammer to hammer that rear main seal in place so that it's flush against the cover. Now let's clean up all of the mating surfaces again with brake cleaner so that we can apply a small bead of ultra black RTV sealant around the whole perimeter of the seal making sure to go towards the inside of the mounting holes. Now let's apply motor oil 
at the inside of that rear main seal. We also do that at the flange of the crank. Now let's push that whole cover assembly in, making sure that we're mindful that the seal doesn't fold in on itself. Hand tighten the 10 millimeter hardware for now and clean up all of the RTV that gets squeezed out. Here's another quick note guys, make sure that this plastic cover at the lower part of the motor is reinstalled because it does have a tendency of falling off when you remove the transmission. Wait about an hour. An hour later. And then tighten all the bolts down to 80 inch pounds. Do it in a crisscross pattern for now and then go around in a circle to make sure everything is tightened properly. Here's a few quick shots comparing the old flywheel and the new flywheel. And here's one comparing the old clutch and pressure plate with the new one. Now let's prep the flywheel and the clutch. Wipe down all of the machining grease on the flywheel using brake cleaner. Install the flywheel and hardware and make sure to apply some Loctite Red on the threads of those hardware. Torque down the bolts in a crisscross pattern as you see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And use the wrench method from earlier to prevent the flywheel from turning. And those are 14 millimeters at 61 foot pounds. Clean up the alignment pins with a scotch Brite and some brake cleaner. And make sure all the rust and debris is completely removed from the surface. We have to reinstall the pins with a pin punch so that they don't mushroom out at the tip. Remember, there are three of these pins that need to be installed on the flywheel. Let's wipe down the whole surface of the flywheel one more time to make sure that the surface is as clean as possible. You don't want any grease on this because this is what touches the clutch. We can now take the alignment tool and mark the tool with a silver sharpie to designate where a tooth is oriented. Clean the pressure plate with brake cleaner and wipe off as much of that machining grease as possible. Here's a quick note guys, make sure we orient the clutch because the clutch does have a flywheel side as you can see here. Now let's install the new clutch and pressure plate assembly. Just to point out, the clutch literally just sits in between the pressure plate and the flywheel as you see in this diagram. We have to make sure we use an alignment tool so that it's centered on that flywheel. We also make sure we use some blue Loctite on those 12 millimeter bolts before reinstalling them. All those bolts are torqued down to 14 foot pounds. You probably won't need to pin the flywheel against the frame since it's only a small amount of torque to tighten down those bolts. Let's keep the clutch alignment tool in there for now and you'll see why more towards the end of this video. Now let's prepare the transmission. Let's spray everything down with soapy water to keep the clutch dust down during this assembly. Let as much of that clutch dust run out as much as possible before moving on. You don't want to inhale that nasty stuff. Pop out the clutch release fork by pulling on the upper ball joint to release it. The throwout bearing and the release fork should come right off. Don't forget the dust boot on that pivot ball. Remove that old pivot ball with a 19mm socket. Now let's clean the mounting hole with brake cleaner and reinstall the pivot ball and that's 19 millimeter torque to 35 foot pounds. And let's clean the shaft and spline with brake cleaner as well. Now let's get to the release fork. You can remove the old throw out bearing by sliding it off as you see here. Let's clean the release fork with brake cleaner as well. Many tic tacs later. Here's what it looks like after it's all been cleaned up. 
we can apply wheel bearing grease on all the bearing surfaces on that fork. Here's the new throw out bearing. There are clips as you see here that needs to slide over that pivot fork. So slide that new throw out bearing over the pivot fork. Make sure that it's sitting properly as you see here. Apply wheel bearing grease into the two cups of the clutch release fork. I know exactly what you're thinking, you dirty bastards. And we can install the dust boot over that cup. And just to point out, this is the cup that goes over the pivot ball. We can also grease the inner side of that throw out bearing with wheel bearing grease. Grease the pivot ball and the shaft. So you just watched the guy grease his ball and shaft for 20 seconds. Let's think about that for a minute. <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Install the whole throw out bearing assembly, making sure to push in that cup into the pivot ball so that it snaps right over the retaining ring in that cup. Move it back and forth to make sure that it moves smoothly. Don't forget to put spline grease on the input shaft spline. So that pretty much finishes up the assembly of the new clutch, flywheel, and rear main seal. But before we reinstall the transmission, there's a few steps you can do to make the reassembly of the transmission against the motor easier for you. We have to make sure that the spline on the input shaft lines up with the spline on the clutch. And going back to the clutch assembly, we orient the flywheel so that the tooth mark that we made on the alignment tool is lined up with the top left threaded hole as you can see here. We can orient a tooth on the transmission so it's lined up with the same mounting hole. Now we can finally reinstall the transmission and the fine details on that work will be in another video and that will be in the description below. So make sure you check that out. Thanks for watching this video guys. Please consider supporting my channel by being a Patreon patron. Details will be in the description below. I do have a few lessons learned that I'd like to share with you guys while I was doing this work. The alignment pins on the flywheel will be much easier to reinstall if the flywheel was actually on the workbench. The throw out bearing, rear main seal, and the clutch release fork is actually very, very cheap. So I would consider replacing them if you are planning on doing this work. What happened to me though was the clutch release fork was coming in too, too late and I had a trip going on the following week so I had to finish this using the old clutch release fork. So that's pretty much it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me that like and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as well. Till next time, peace out.